Hi, good evening. I am so excited to get started with this video. Tonight, I'm going to discuss with you the um, amazing full moon that we have tonight. And of course, today's date is December 12th. Well, guess what time the moon will be at its peak? 12, 12 a.m. Now let's talk about numbers. December is the 12th month. 12th day of the 12th month. The time at its peak of fullness will be 1212. So now we have literally four 12s. Could you imagine if this were 2012? <laughs> well, you know it's not. We're in 2019. But this is the last full moon of the decade. So, you know, when you hear the full moons, you don't really think about it much, like in that sense of super esoteric nature of it. I think of it very esoterically. I think about, oh, it's time for the full moon manifestations, charge my crystals, get them all prepared, cleanse them and charge them and get my manifestations out. But we're talking about superpower now because we have the number 12 four times in this full moon. Now this full moon is uh, called the cold moon. According to Farmer's Almanac, it's called the cold moon. It also has other names. The long night's moon and the moon before Yule. Well, that makes a lot of sense because Christmas is around the corner. This is December 12th. The full moon, esoterically, when we think about the full moon, and scientifically, of course, is the culmination of a cycle. So once it reaches its peak of fullness, that whole cycle of, of, uh, of the moon itself has culminated. So it's all about peak intensity and energy. So now in numerology, if you think about... The number 12 wait until I get into that but right now Romeo is barking because guess what Romeo wants to come in and and listen to our conversation okay I'm gonna go get Romeo I'll be right back so you can meet him if you haven't met him already here we go okay so I'm sorry to keep you waiting but Romeo wants to meet you. So this is Romeo. He's my rescue fur baby Shih Tzu. He's 100% Shih Tzu, and he's just a lovely, lovely boy. So he's gonna sit down next to me while we talk about the full moon in all its glory. Okay, you nice and comfy, Romeo? So we've discussed the full moon as being the last full moon of this decade. Now, of course, we're going into a new decade, right? Into 2020. So this is the last full moon. Isn't that exciting? And it's also in Gemini. So our cold moon, the full moon of December 12, 2019, is in Gemini. So the influence of Gemini with this full moon may bring one to speak their full truth. I took a lot of notes because I could not believe all of the things that are involved in this moon. So I had to write it down. I didn't want to forget anything. It may bring one to speak their full truth without taking into account others' feelings. So if you decide that you want to clear your mind and just get out whatever it is that you want to say, Step back, count to 10, take deep breaths, try to be diplomatic and considerate of others, and focus on having a productive and fruitful conversation instead of a fight. I think that it's much better to talk things out than to argue over them, don't you think? Okay, we're gonna move on. So one other interesting event that will occur tonight is that before the moon is at its fullest peak, that's at 12, 12 a.m., so prior to 12, 12 a.m., 
we have an unbelievable astronomical event. We have Venus, Saturn, and Pluto in an alignment. So Venus represents love, Saturn represents commitment, and Pluto represents power struggles. Now remember what we said, what I said, but I'm hoping you listen, about being careful how you handle a conversation with this full moon and the energy of this full moon to be more diplomatic. So I think the power struggle of Pluto might come into, into a conflict situation with your conversation. Don't allow that to happen. Just think about it because I'm telling you to be careful. And it is aligned with Capricorn. So we have Venus, Saturn, and Pluto aligning in Capricorn. Isn't that phenomenal? So on top of us having a quadruple 12 in numerology, I will get into the, the esoterics of the number 12. Not only do we have the numerology with the number 12s, the fact that this is our last full moon of this decade, and that it falls along with this um, alignment of Venus, Saturn, and Pluto, it's, it's a lot to take in, I, I know. But because of this alignment, we can expect major conversations, talkative Gemini, remember that this full moon is in Gemini. We could expect major conversations around love, loyalty, and commitment. Love, loyalty, and commitment. Now Venus represents love, right? And Saturn represents commitment. And Pluto represents the power struggle. So we have like a little bit of a monkey wrench in the system. But all of this is aligned within Capricorn. And that's just an interesting combination. So we need to be careful about our conversation. Keep that in mind to be very diplomatic, to be very caring, very considerate of others, and especially of the person that you're having a conversation with. So we will feel cosmically compelled to express our most deepest and frankest thoughts about others to others. And if they don't like it, well, you're gonna say it's time to move on. But again, LOL, I'm telling you to think twice before you make any rash decisions. The good news is that we, we're more likely than not, this full moon will bring forth a positive transformation of partnerships. Now, I'm reading my notes because I'm covering so much information. Through a full-out, open highway of communication, after hours of talking and sharing our perspectives on different issues and what we expect from each other. So the good news is that, more likely than not, this full moon will bring forth a positive transformation. So it's not all doom and gloom. It's really all wonderful, especially having a full moon. Full moon is always a good event. It's a time to, to have your manifestations in hand to decide what you want and what you're seeking. And it's also a culmination from the past cycles, the lunar cycles and the whole month in and of itself. And on top of that, it's a culmination of this entire decade so to say the very least it will be positive it's just that you need to be aware that because it's in gemini that you may speak your piece a little too much without thinking about what you're saying so you just have to be careful it's kind of like when when there is mercury retrograde in a full moon um you, even though people are afraid of Mercury and retrograde, and I've done previous videos on this, so when you get a chance, when you have some time, because I know you're all busy, you can look at my previous videos 
as I talk about Mercury in retrograde and how it aligns very nicely with the full moon. And I talk about crystals, I talk about all different things. So, but tonight we're gonna to talk about this full moon and I'm going to bring in um, the subject of numerology and, and talk about how the number 12 is just so prevalent here. And it's, it's very poignant as well for, for you to under, understand the nature of it. So the full cold moon will arrive just after midnight. So I mentioned that before, 12-12, on the 12th of December, which is the 12th month. Venus and Saturn reach an alignment conjunction. An alignment is a conjunction. Uh, they reached it yesterday on Wednesday, December 11th, sharing the same celestial longitude. Both Venus and Saturn will be in Sagittarius, which is a wonderful thing because, of course, you know, Sagittarius is, is the um, star sign for the sun sign for uh, December. And uh, that's always nice to have Sagittarius in the mix. So we talked about that. Just want to make sure I cover everything. Let's now talk about numerology of number 12. So I hope you're all here still. I mean, we're almost 12 minutes into it and I just, I'm so excited about sharing this information with you that I hope you are too. Also, before I get into the numerology of the number 12, I wanted to mention that if you need to get in touch with me, you could comment uh, on this video. I'm also on Instagram. I'm Ang, A-N-G, one, N-Y-C. So Ang, A-N-G, the number one, N-Y-C. You could follow me on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok. And on TikTok, I'm Big Apple Ang, because I'm from New York City, the Big Apple. So think about Big Apple a -N -G, and you could follow me there as well. And so I'm on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter is uh, also Ang1NYC. So Twitter and Instagram are the same username, which is Ang1NYC, and TikTok is different. I'm Big Apple Ang. So just to give you a little bit um, a bio about myself, uh, my name is Angela, and you could call me Ang or Angie. Just try not to call me anything bad. <laughs> so anyhow, I was born and raised in New York City, and I live not far from New York City now in the suburbs. And um, I'm a mom, I have three children, and I have my four, fur baby, he's my fourth child, Romeo, that you just met. So I've always been enamored with different esoteric subjects, and um, I just, really enjoy it. I know a lot about crystals and tarot and numerology and astrolo astrology. And uh, I also sell crystals, tons of different crystals, which I'm gonna show you some of the crystals that you could use during your full moon manifestation at the end of this video. So if you're ever interested or so inclined, I sell all different types of altar supplies. I have uh, metaphysical products, uh, chakra, products, things like that. So now we're going to move into the number 12, talking about the number 12. The number 12 is an important number in terms of numerology since it signifies completion. So not only do we have the completion of the cycle with the full moon, I'm going to show you my selenite. This is my selenite globe, my sphere that I absolutely love. And to me, this is the full moon. So this is my full moon. So whenever there's a full moon, I always have it out. And I do have it out even when there isn't a full moon because I love it so much, especially when I'm doing readings. I really do enjoy its energy. So we have the completion of the cycle, the lunar cycle. So we have the number 12 in December, we have the number 12 in the 12th of December, and we have the number 12 twice in 1212, which is when it reaches full peak culmination of its fullness. It also belongs to the star sign Pisces. Now the number 12 resonates with Pisces, which is a wonderful 
psychic energy. You know, there's the energy of the moon. It's a water sign. You have Pisces as a water sign. You have Cancer as a water sign. And you have Scorpio, which is a water sign. So, but this, the number 12, resonates with not only the full moon, but also with Pisces. So, uh, talking about Pisces, and you know that um, Piscean people are very psychically in tuned. And I, I do have, I'm an Aries, but I do have a lot of Pisces in my astro chart, which is important. I have Scorpio, I have a lot, a lot of water signs. I have Cancer in my water, that's a water sign. It also belongs to the star sign. So now we're gonna go back to number 12 how it belongs to the star sign Pisces, who is known to be a spiritual sign, that is in constant touch with the energies of the universe. It represents authority and completeness. It is a symbol of faith. Now, the number 12 is a symbol of faith, and we'll, we will get into that. I'm going to put back my selenite sphere, but for now, I just want to show it to you. Isn't it gorgeous? I love it. And I talk about the um, different characteristics of crystals in, in my previous video. So when you get a chance, you could look at it about iridescence and chatoyancy and things like that. I talked about that. But now we're going to talk about the Bible and the number 12. In the Bible, the number 12 is a prominent and powerful number. It is considered a perfect number in that it symbolizes God's power and authority. Now in the Old Testament, the number 12 fits in in a number of different ways, a number of different ways. The 12 sons of Jacob, and those 12 sons form the 12 tribes of Israel. Now I have to tell you that the high priest of the 12 tribes of Israel wore a breastplate and on this breastplate were 12 gemstones, cabochons. So now we have the number 12 again, because on the high priest breastplate were 12 cabochon gemstones. So are we getting the idea here about the power of the number 12? And I heard that in one of my videos that I watched, uh, I think it was on Gaia TV, do you have a Gaia subscription? That's very interesting. There's a lot of metaphysical shows. It's all about metaphysical things. That the um, that actually the breastplate was super powerful in that it had like a portal. Each each gemstone had an activation portal. I know this sounds a little crazy, but think about it. Uh, it was a way to connect outside Earth with the universe, aliens, whoever was assisting the people that were on this Earth. There was, um, it wasn't just all about him having this showy breastplate with 12 cabochon gemstones, like, oh, look at me, look at this beautiful breastplate. No, it actually had a power, an innate power to give him like a hyper hypersensitivity for things. And he was the high priest. The New Testament tells us that Jesus had 12 apostles. According to the book of Revelation, the kingdom of God has 12 gates guarded by legions of 12 angels. So there's the 12 legions of angels. So now we have the kingdom of God has 12 gates guarded by 12 angels, the 12 legions of angels. The number 12 appears 187 times in the Bible, 187 times. I wonder if that number, 187, that would come out to a number seven in numerology when you reduce it to one digit. And seven is a very important number esoterically and just in daily life, right? Seven days of the week. So the number seven is also very important. So there you go. 
187 times in the Bible. I did not know that. But see, I, I did my research and I've been preparing for this video. I thought it was gonna be a short video. I keep saying, yeah, I'm gonna do a short, maybe 15 minutes tops. And then I learn all this interesting information that I have to share with you. It wouldn't be fair if I didn't tell you all this stuff. So we have 12 months of the year, 12 constellations of the zodiac, right? 12 is the product of three. So now think about the number three esoterically is also a very important number. Numerology, it signifies the, the divine in the Bible. Here we go back to the Bible. It signifies the divine. In a nutshell, the number 12 signifies and represents God's kingdom, perfect government, and divine authority. And it does make sense about God's kingdom because his kingdom had 12 gates, right? And if you break down the number 12, it's a three. And 12 legion of angels, 12 apostles, 12 tribes of Israel. Break them all down, it's a number three. You get it? Are you following what I'm saying here? Isn't this fascinating? Okay. Now let's break it down more, the number 12. One signifies the beginning, right? Two is all about seeing two sides of any situation. Diplomacy, partnership. Think about what I talked about before with being careful about this Gemini full moon. Because if you take in the power of 12, which you should, I hope you will, because I'm explaining this to you and its importance. You need diplomacy. Think about it as a partnership, be diplomatic, see other people's sides and perspectives, and you'll be fine. In numerology, the number three, and I'm breaking it down again with the number 12, breaking down to one digit, because one plus two is three resonates with the energies of, and you're gonna love this, optimism, joy, inspiration, and creativity. Speech and communication. Hello, we were just talking about the full moon in Gemini. It's all about communication, right? Be careful how you communicate, but when you are being careful, amazing things are gonna happen because the number three, which is a culmination of if you bring down the number 12 to one digit, resonates with such positive things, optimism, joy, inspiration, creativity, speech and communication, perfectly aligns with Gemini. The speech and communication part, just uplift yourself, think about the power of the number 12, and you're gonna be fine. Imagination, here's another thing that number three resonates with, intelligence, sociability and friendliness, kindness and compassion. So just be kind, have compassion, be friendly and be sociable. This is your time to get out. Perfect time because it's the holiday season. Isn't this the time to share with family and friends? Don't you think about all this? It, it, it just fits perfect, like a perfect puzzle. Like at first you were a little bit confused, but now it's all falling together very nicely. Psychic ability, manifesting and manifestation. Now the number three, very psychic number. And think about the power behind Pisces and the number three is the third month, which is March, which is Pisces and Aries. I'm in March, so, but I'm at the end. Pisces is at the beginning. And the three resonates with the energies of, and get this, the ascended masters and indicates that they are all around you assisting when asked but you have to remember to ask them they are not going to take it upon themselves to help you you need to be out there and ask them for help the ascended masters help you to focus on the divine spark within you and others and assist with manifesting your desires. Here we go with the full moon, people. Time to manifest your desires. I hope I'm not moving my hands around a lot. I'm of Italian extraction. I don't know if you realize that. Besides being a native New Yorker and having a New York accent, I talk a lot with my hands. Hey, you understand I'm Italian. What can I tell you? 
They will help you to find peace, clarity, and love within. The Ascended Masters, think about that. They're gonna help you to find peace, clarity, and love within. And last, before I go into the crystals, this is, I just love showing you my crystals, the Wiccan Reed. Think about the rule of three, the threefold law or the law of return. It's a religious tenet held by some Wiccans, pagans, and occultists. I'm sure you know it, but in case you don't, I'm gonna tell you what it, what it says. Whatever energy a person puts out into the universe, into the world, be it positive, remember this, be it positive or negative, it will be returned to that person three times. So be aware of that law of the rule of three. Be aware of that, of the threefold law. You don't want to be negative. Do you want to get threefold negativity back? Put out positive things, people. That's why I, I get disgusted with Facebook and so, even Instagram, they do it. All this negativity, posting negativity. Guess what? When you post negative things on whatever social networking, guess what happens? It's a pattern. You're not gonna get your manifestations to come to life if you are negative, unless you have negative manifestations. You shouldn't have that. Don't do it. I'm telling you right now. What do you think, Romeo? Isn't it, isn't it better to be positive? Definitely. So now I'm gonna show you. We got a few minutes left. I don't wanna bore you with all this stuff, but it is the full moon. Now listen up. I mean, I'm in New York, but wherever you are, it doesn't matter, it's the full moon. Unless you're in Australia and that passed already. Let's say you have some jewelry. I have my Mala beads. And you want, you want to charge them in, with, with the energy of the full moon, this glorious full moon. Please do not miss it. Let's say you don't want to put it outside. Like tonight is okay. It's not going to rain. It's a clear night here in New York. So like I might do it, but most likely my jewelry I would put on the windowsill. So you have some special things like, like my mala, my, my mala beads, which help me also with manifestation. And if you have third eye crystal jewelry, like I have my abalone earrings that I, I like to put out to uh, charge in the full moon and my kyanite. Now take a look at this. This is third eye. Wait a minute. There you go. This is kyanite. It's perfect for full moon, perfect for any kind of psychic work, any kind of divination. Okay. So you could put your jewelry if you don't want to put it outside or, you know, I mean, what if you don't live in a private house? I understand that. If you live in an apartment, you're going to have to put it on the windowsill. For that matter, you're going to have to put it on the windowsill, even the crystals. My selenite, I put it on the windowsill. Do you want to know why? I'm going to show you selenite. I'm going to show it to you. I already showed you my selenite sphere. Don't ever put selenite outside unless you're 100% sure that it's not going to rain. And guess what, people? Weather is crazy. You can't always predict it. So in my opinion, and I would tell you because I, I love my selenite. See, I have all different selenites. I have the selenite wands. I have selenite towers. And I also have um, my selenite moon. Get a load of that. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you to put them on the windowsill. On the windowsill. Do you think he wants to be ruined? You know what happens? He can melt. See, he can melt. But isn't he gorgeous? Look at that chatoyancy. And luminescence. Okay, so selenite. Put it on your windowsill. Don't put it outside. This is another selenite wand. Okay. And this is a selenite cube that you cut from a wand. See? From the longer sticks of selenite. And this is a selenite tumbled selenite. I've, I'm pretty sure I know I've showed this in previous videos. I don't want to be repetitive, but maybe you didn't see the other video, so I get to share it with you. Plus, it's perfect for the full moon. And for any kind of divination work, because 
you know, if you're working with tarot and you want clarity, if you need to make a decision and you really want to make the right decision, you need clarity, right? Well, guess what? This takes all the cobwebs out, all the cobwebs, and it helps you to see things in a clearer light. Get rid of negative energy, too, if you have any. I like to think I don't have negative energy around me, but just in case <laughs> you have that, especially when there's a lot of people around you. Right, Romeo? You don't want to be like in a big, especially it's holiday time, you might be in like a big, you know, party or gathering. Take one of the selenites that you charged under the full moon. Let's keep it with you. Look at this. This is an opalite. It's actually not crystal, but isn't that cool? It's an owl, and it has, like, iridescence. I, I like the different colors that come out of that. So I keep this on my altar because I like to use it also for clarity because, you know, the owl is wise, isn't he? And the owl helps to bring out the wisdom. Here's a selenite rose. Again, never put it in the water. Wonderful for meditation, clearing the thoughts. If you are in fact a psychic medium, it's great for communication with the other side. If you want to manifest wealth in your life, well, I have, I have my selenite points. Oh, don't mind me. See, I'm in my country bumpkin clothes because it's cold out. Okay. So this is a citrine point. What do you do with it? After you, you could put it under the water. If you, you don't need to because it's a power stone. But let's say you just get it. You just bought it and you, you want to make sure it's cleansed. Now, you never have to ever put selenite in the water, so you know that already. But let's say you do want to cleanse this. You put it under the water. You picture the faucet, the way the water is coming down, like a column of white light. Think about that column of white light cleansing out all the negativity. You take it. You put it outside. It's okay. You can put it outside. And you charge it. Now, ideally, I always tell my my customers, whoever, friends, family, whoever asked me about all the information I have in my head about crystals, I would ideally like for you to uh, put this out the night before the full moon. But let's say you forget the night before and you realize, oh, it's a full moon. You could do it. Do it the full moon. Just get it out there. And you could keep it one more day. So ideally, the night before, the night of, and the next day. And you know what? It's okay if it's in the sun. Just as long as it's not going to be in the sun for like weeks, you know, then it might fade. But you're not going to have a problem. So this is a citrine, a citrine, C-I-T-R-I-N-E, citrine point. See, it's yellow. It's a solar plexus chakra. We'll get into that in another video all about the chakras. Very good stone to have for your um, inner power, you know, and feeling of confidence. Well, where do you put it? After you, man you, you, you put it out under the full moon for manifestation of wealth, because it's a wealth stone, also called the merchant stone. Where do you put it in your home? You got your front door, right? Picture the furthest to the left and back. The furthest away from your front door, the corner of your house, the furthest back to the left. You hear me, people? The left all the way in the back. That happens to be your prosperity center. It's feng shui. I don't know if you've heard of feng shui, but it's Japanese. They seem to know everything about placement. Just listen and put it there. Don't just randomly put it anywhere else. I like to follow the feng shui of it when it comes to prosperity stones. So do that. Okay. Also, wonderful crystal uh, this is actually a mineral i'll show you the two mineral sample specimens this is kyanite i showed you my earrings that were in kyanite and i also have a tumble kyanite see that's a tumble this is third eye chakra perfect for psychic work divination you want to keep that on the table if you have one of these um, kyanite specimens put it on the table when you're doing your divination 
along with the cylinder. Hey, the more the merrier, believe me. And also I have optical calcite. Let me show you the optical calcite. So this optical calcite comes, comes from Iceland. And it also has, it's kind of like Ulexite, you know, the TV stone, because it, it also has an iridescence to it. It's kind of hard to see because of the light. If it were daytime, I, I could show you, like you could see the rainbows. But this is a wonderful stone also for direction, purpose, direction, with clarity, making the right decision. You know, the Vikings would use this stone, but of a clearer type. And what they would do is they would take, they, they would take the, because uh, it, it's Icelandic spar. It's similar to selenite, but it's different. So they would take it and they would put it up to the sky and they would find on a cloudy day, the location of the sun. They could see the light come through the stone and then they would know where the sun was. Isn't that amazing? Because you know, look, they were Vikings and let's face it, up north it's not always sunny. Believe me, I've been to Iceland twice and I could tell you <laughs> it's not a sunny place. It's a gorgeous place. Please, if you ever have a chance to go to Iceland, you absolutely have to go. Put it on your bucket list. It's amazing. It's like being on another planet. The air is gorgeous. It's so clear. It's like being inside an air purifier. The water is amazing right from the sink. It's bottled water from the sink. It's just everything about it's amazing. This is also a prosperity crystal, pyrite. This is pyrite, also known as fool's gold. I don't know why they call it fool's gold. And really, you're not a fool when you, when you know about the power of pyrite, you're not a fool. Here's tumble pyrite. Okay, fool's gold in the sense that people thought it was real gold and it wasn't. I get that. But this is a wonderful stone also to use in your prosperity manifestations. You could also keep it next to your citrine point in your prosperity corner. Okay. And I also have clear quartz. Clear quartz. See, it's getting late. And, I, and I, I'm talking too much. I hope I'm not boring you. So here we go with clear quartz. Now this is also wonderful. It's double terminated. This is great to put, to program your manifestations in. So let's just say you're manifesting prosperity. You have your citrine point. I would take a tumbled citrine along with it Put them all together with the quartz, with the pyrite. Do you understand? Let's say you don't have a fancy quartz point like this, like a fire and ice. Isn't it amazing? This is fire and ice. It definitely has rainbows in it. But let's say you have more of a common citrine point. N not citrine point, quartz point. You see, I'm starting to lose it. Well, it's okay. Just put it next to the citrine. Now you have all your manifestation put into and concentrated into a group of crystals that are going to be under the full moon. Remember, these can go outside, but don't ever put, very important, don't ever put pyrite in water. Don't ever do it. You don't have to. You know why? If you put it in water, sulfuric acid comes out. So, if you understand anything or have retained any of the voluminous amount of information that I've mentioned, if you ever have a gold pyrite, see what it looks like? Isn't that amazing? Plus, it's got a hole in it. Oh boy, that's even extra special. Okay, don't put it in the water. Doesn't need it. All you need to do is keep it next to your selenite, purify it, citrine, purify it. Citrine is a natural purifier. It's a power stone, the same way selenite is. Very important stones. You've got to have these stones. I mean, if you know anything about crystals, if you don't know anything about crystals, I'm telling you, you got to have selenite and citrine and quartz. If, if you only have three, these are the three I would have. 
because you put the your thoughts and your manifestation, everything gets programmed into this. Of course, you could do the same, your programming, this is automatic programming because the tree is meant for that. And you're asking the universe through the power of selenite and the full moon to help you along with your ideas and manifestations. So also a wonderful stone for the full moon is, and it's a grounding stone, is hematite. You see the hematite? So this is a grounding stone because you know, at this point we're all up in the air. We're thinking full moon, oh my goodness, we're flying up in the air. We can't wait to see the full moon. We have the selenite, we have, we have all of this, you know, up in the air ascension stones, crown chakra, everything. Come on, you gotta get a little grounded here. Maybe have a glass of water. Well, even the water will charge you to be more psychic. So along with the water, maybe eat something, have a little bit to eat. Because sometimes when you do divination, you get a little bit loopy, you get a little bit, you know, headstrong. Well, guess what? The hematite helps to ground you, brings you back down to the real world, even though you don't want to be in the real world. But it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of grounding because if you fly too high, you know, you're going to fall. <laughs> you're going to fall. So, okay, so there we go. And my last I'm going to show you is my other fire and ice crystal. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at, look at the windows in there. It's just unbelievable. And look at the rainbow effect. It's like there are angels floating around in there. So, again, to program, these you could put in water, no problem. You put them in the water, column of white light, protection, good energy. Now you put them under the full moon. You got your thoughts, whatever it is you want. The full moon is a time for manifestation. What does that mean? Let's say you want something like a new job. Well, that comes along with prosperity, right? Perfect. So you could use your citrine, but you can envision yourself with the new job, envision yourself with money coming in, envision yourself, maybe you want a new friendship, maybe you don't have enough friends and you want more friends, envision that. You could add in some rose quartz too, that wouldn't hurt. Rose quartz is very good for love and affection, for uh, socialization, for, uh, compatibility with friends or lovers, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, it all has to do with being compatible. You don't wanna be friendly with somebody who's not friendly or who you don't jive with very well. So, and also let's say you wanna manifest a, a new boyfriend, a girlfriend or partner or whatever it may be. A new love, a new love life. You're tired of the old one. You want to move in with the new. You got the full moon, culmination. It's the end going into the beginning, right? Rose quartz, I would definitely put the rose quartz. Let's say you need more love with the romance you have. Let's say you don't want to get rid of your, your mate. <laughs> you want to keep him. He's a keeper, she's a keeper, whatever. Rose quartz, put that under the full moon. It's all good. See, there's rose quartz in, in here. There's also amethyst. You could wear rose quartz. You could have tumbled rose quartz. You know, I don't have it in front of me. I have tons of rose quartz, but I didn't bring it forward here without conversation because I wanted to concentrate on the psychic stones and on the moon, the stones for the moon. Like here, we have moonstone. I have moonstone pendant. Isn't that amazing? Can you see it? That's moonstone. See the blue flash? So I always wear my moonstone during the full moon. And we also have for psychic protection and psychic ability, third eye chakra, we have black kyanite. This is black kyanite in its natural form. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Doesn't it look like a, this looks like, kind of like a fishtail. And look at that one, isn't that amazing? It looks like a little broom. One more thing before I leave you. You could put these items under the moon. Let's say you don't want to bring them outside. You don't want everybody to know that you have an altar broom, right? Or that you use uh, sage to cleanse your area, your, your corner of the world. Put them by the windowsill. Listen, if you live in an apartment, put everything by the windowsill. 
Isn't this amazing, by the way? I got it in a metaphysical shop in Connecticut. I, I don't even remember where it was, but I fell in love with it. It's handmade. And you see it has different has different feathers, and, and that, that's the peacock in there. And this I, I also bought at a metaphysical fair because I do fairs. I sell crystals and metaphysical supplies, but there was somebody that was making these, and I just thought it was amazing. See, it's handmade. See, it has the tray. There you go. It's got symbols, important symbols, the tri trifecta. I can't think of it offhand right now because I talked so much that I can't think straight. But I know it's a, a metaphysical sign. It's also Wiccan. And it's part of also the rule of three. Now, remember about the rule of three. I'm going to leave you with that. Whatever you put out into the world, into the universe, whatever you put out there, you're going to get back three times, okay? This is a way to protect you, to have this symbol. So if you have this symbol, then it is also a way to protect you from any kind of negative energy. But don't think that you're going to put it out and think you could be protected by, by the symbol. Uh, try triquenta something i can't think of it right now look it up people look it up look up the symbol the wiccan symbol of of uh three and you'll you'll know what it is okay so i think we're done i mean at this point you're probably sleeping oh i also have this is also for third eye it's great for the full moon this is amethyst amethyst comes in different forms that's a raw amethyst and also comes in the dog tooth Amethyst, see? We call that dog, too. So you got different. And we have lapis, third eye. So we have different things. And you know what I like to do? If you have one of these, see? I like to place. This is clear quartz, see? It's like a geode. I like to place the crystals in there. Get more amplification. We're talking amplification with clear quartz. Amplification, okay? So that's why it's a power stone. So that's why I'm telling you, if you only have three stones, let it be selenite, citrine, and clear quartz. We're talking amplification on all of them. Let's say you're tired. You really, like, got no energy. Don't take it out of your prosperity corner. Either have another one or use the tumbled one. Keep it with you, hold it. You wake up. You don't need a cup of coffee. All right, guys. Enjoy this wonderful full moon. Go out there and take a picture. And if you have any comments, you could send it to me. Okay, namaste, have a great night.